New year, same new me. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Gamer Crafting Podcast. This is episode, I don't know, whatever came after Vlogmas. <laughs> uh, if you've only been watching the podcast, you may have wondered why I was gone for a month or so. It's because we were doing Vlogmas um, from the 1st to the 24th of December and then we took a little bit of a break. I say we, it's mostly me, but <laughs> I took a little bit of a break. Um, we still have been doing our regular Saturday night sort of stitch and bitch, chill out, video game watching live streams on YouTube. But anyway, I'm back for the first proper podcast of 2020, and I am here to tell you that I'm going to be the same as I was last year. I feel like it's really tempting, especially this time of year, to have all these, you know, resolutions that we're all going to be super different, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and it's so much pressure that, like, most of us give up by, like, the end of January, if not sooner. So I'm here to say I'm just going to be working to be a better person, um, just without all of the pressure of it being New Year's. I have things that I would like to do better at. I would like to be better at organizing. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to be better at organizing, especially when I have big uh, launches coming up, which is basically what a lot of this around here is doing. Um, with regards to like the process being a bit more organized and streamlined rather than me like dyeing it and like rinsing it and drying it and then it kind of sits for a while and turns into a giant yarn monster of doom and then we work on twisting them up and labeling them which by then it just becomes this enormous monolith of work that nobody wants to deal with so that's something that i want to work on in the in the new year along with a lot of other things i will say that i'm gonna have a really 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 big announcement next week. I mean, it's possible that some of you aren't going to care, but it's kind of a big deal to me. It's really important to me. It's something I've been working on for almost two years, just about two years. So it's really important to me. So I do hope that you all come back next week to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do before I can make this big announcement to make sure that everything is kind of goes smoothly. And anyway, Anyway, so that's what I'm working on this year. You know, being a better person for myself with regards to being a bit more streamlined and organized as I try to do, you know, more things in life and add new creative projects to my giant pool of creativity, um, which is vast, but my time pool is very small and much more like a dry dub puddle. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit today about what I finished in 2019 and then realized I couldn't quite real remember what I had finished right I keep a bullet journal that says here's the things that I finished this year but realize that after the first two things that I cast off in 2019 I didn't put any of them <laughs> I didn't put any of the rest of them in there because this you know this sort of tracker was at the beginning of the bullet journal and it was a page that I didn't flip past very often and I kind of just forgot about it and that's my own fault. <laughs> I will say that some of the stuff that I did finish, I don't know where it is. It's either buried um, in a sea of knitwear in the closet, in like the plastic tub where all of the, all of the finished scarves and sweaters and everything live to keep them safe, or they're packed away to be show samples, which I will take with me to shows. And I'm sort of thinking that the latter is correct, which is why I was struggling to find them today. I think they're packed away in one of many bags. Uh, so I will say that my first finished object of 2019 was a fox wedding shawl. Uh, the fox wedding shawl is made with chunky weight yarn and I made it with my 13th Dr. Colorway. Uh, I will say that I know that this is what's left of I think I used three skeins for that. This is what's left. So this is the 13th Dr. Colorway. Um, I have seen that a few people have tagged it as clown barf on Ravelry. And like, I guess that's fair, right? It's fair. That's fine. It's cute though. I like it. I definitely have some like fluff happening on my shirt. So this is the 13th Dr. Colorway. This is what I made my... <clears throat> my fox wedding shawl with i i'll try to dig up a picture i don't know if i even really took pictures because it was a good nine months before i even blocked it what even i don't think i blocked it until just before we went up to perth festival of yarn back in september and i finished this probably in 
I mean, it was definitely really early in the year. So we're talking like January, February time. I want to even say it was probably January. Uh, so that was the first thing that I made this year and then didn't block until Perth. And then apparently never even got proper pictures of it, which just shows you what an awful, like, I'm just not very organized when it comes to my finished objects or my, my works in progress. Everyone's like, oh, you should share them on Ravelry. But I don't actually spend tons of time on Ravelry. And the time that I do spend on Ravelry, Ravelry, I'm trying to keep up with friends that I've made in forums. And I kind of forget about everything else. And I, like I said, I'm very time poor at the moment. So, um, so yeah, I never never I'm just now realizing that I never got pictures of it especially not after it was blocked so like well done me for literally never getting a picture of that yeah but I did finish it I did it's I promise um the second thing that I finished in 2019 was a brioche kitty hat and it was because I really wanted to try brioche that not this year <laughs> it's the second time I've done that and it's only January 2nd I really wanted to try brioche in 2019. I really wanted to get to grips with it and see if it was something that I enjoyed. I absolutely loved it. I don't know why I didn't do more brioche in 2019. I just got sidetracked. I really enjoyed the knit. It was a really fun hat. It's, you know, you carry along. So it's like DK and then you carry along like a textured, like a fluffy yarn. And I used my monster floof because that's about when I launched that. And it's lovely, but it's uh, very warm probably too warm for me because I tend to run a bit hot so I haven't really worn it very much I need to take a vacation somewhere very cold where I'll be really grateful for it uh, but that's something that I know for sure is packed away uh, to use as samples of show so people can kind of see how the monster floof kind of knits up uh, I do have a picture of that so I will put that here <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the hat it was a really fun knit and uh, I definitely want to do more brioche in 2020, maybe, probably, if I get my act together, which is debatable. <laughs> and then I worked on a whole bunch of stuff and didn't finish any of it. <laughs> I, at one point, cast on a Volt sweater, which I've done the ribbing of the front side, and that's it. I... <laughs> I really like the colors that I've chosen. The yarn's all wound up. I just haven't done any more than that because it's intarsia and I know that I'm gonna have to sit down and really focus on making sure that my intarsia doesn't suck because it usually does. And then I cast on a four fox sake sweater which I'm about five to ten rows of the three color color work from the end of the yoke when I that can then split and then it's just plain knitting from there and I really wanted to get it done by the end of the year but I just didn't I just didn't have time December just completely almost bypassed me it just flew by so fast there was so much stuff that I really wanted to do in December that I just I legitimately did not have time for the first half of December we were both working basically every day until 11 p.m trying to get everything done before our post office closed um and our local post office doesn't open again until Monday which is when we'll start shipping out all of the yarn loots that were purchased last week if you don't follow on Facebook or Instagram. Um, the yarn loots are basically kind of a mystery bag where you can get some discontinued stuff or some one-of-a-kind shades um, and you can either get like you'll get at least 120 grams but you could get up to 300 if you're one of the people that we randomly pull out of the stack. So those will all start shipping on Monday and we'll get them out as soon as possible. I'm trying to think what else I cast on in 2019 and I'm really struggling to remember. I think there was, there's been some abandoned stuff. I'm trying to think what's hanging around in some project bags that I've now buried in the back of the cupboard because I got too, too you know, too frustrated. And I don't know, there was probably one hat. There was other things. There was, <laughs> I really wanted to finish another garment in 2019, but I did not. I, like I said, I cast on the Volt and the Fur Fox 8, but I didn't finish them. 2019, I don't know, there was a lot going on. I was away for most of May trying to deal with um, sort of reclaiming my Italian citizenship is kind of how that works. It's still in process. And then we had Woolen, and then there was Perth, and then I had to apply for my visa renewal here, which is unrelated to the Italian thing. And that's still pending three months later. Uh, I've had a few people message and ask like, oh, what was the outcome? And I don't know. <laughs> so I, yeah, 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any updates. So, uh, I don't know, 2019, it kind of, and then I was trying to do other things. I was trying to like, um, I spent some time trying to like learn ukulele and that was fun. I was trying to just reclaim hobbies that are just hobbies. They're not necessarily meant to be, you know, monetized because that's a thing I think a lot of us have lost. I got this, I got lost in this really deep tweet thread yesterday about it and it's a whole thing. I think that a lot of times it's difficult to sort of reclaim your hobbies because we all feel like we should be productive all the time or monetizing all the time. Otherwise it's lazy or you're not trying hard enough and it's a whole like weird cultural thing. So in 2019, I was doing some more watercolor painting and I was trying to make time to like, you know, learn ukulele and just kind of like have fun with it rather than it being something that I wanted to eventually like be good enough at to monetize. I'm never going to be good enough <laughs> at either of those things to monetize. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a whole thing. But that being said, 2019, I knew at the start of it, I was like, this year's going to grab me by the throat and drag me through the entire year. And I'm going to get to the end of the year and be like, how was that a whole year? And honestly, I was 100% right on that count. 2019 did grab me by the throat and drag me through the whole year. And I feel like I barely had time to just breathe <laughs> the entire, the entire year. It was just just go 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 all year long so this year i'm trying to put in some more uh i don't know some more methods to make things a little easier for us to manage with regards to to that <laughs> and especially because we don't have much space so we're getting to the point now where the reason that it's harder to keep up isn't because we aren't doing our jobs it's because we don't have enough space to do all of the jobs at once whereas if we had more space we would. We can't look at getting more space until we know what's happening with visa stuff. So it's all very frustrating. Anyway, there's enough of my excuses about why I didn't finish enough projects in 2019. That was like a solid, you know, five minutes of excuses for me. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I also was abducted by a giant rainbow elephant, and that's why I couldn't finish projects in 2019. No. Uh, the other big thing that I finished in 2019, actually, was my enormous Northeasterly, which I had all neatly, like, folded up. I'm gonna have to neatly fold it up again. So, here's my... This is so big, like, I'm struggling to even... <laughs> I needed to get... <laughs> I should have had some help here. Anyway, so this is my giant Northeasterly blanket. It is probably about three and a half or four feet no more than that maybe five feet wide and it's about seven feet long it is super super mega long see it's still coming um because i am a tall person and i don't like having to like only barely cover the tips of my feet when i'm snuggling i would much rather prefer you know being able to just properly snuggle in so this is my northeasterly blanket and I loved the pattern. I loved the whole process. There were some that I, there's a join as you go. There were some that I joined as I went and there were some strips that I knitted um, separately so that I didn't have to take the whole blanket, especially once it started getting absolutely mahoosive. I would have needed, you know, to have like a little red wagon pulled behind me with the whole blanket in it. So there were some that I knitted separately and then I joined, uh, I joined together later just by kind of like, you know, sort of crocheting through the loops and trying to like hackily make it look make the joins look the same and I'm not super convinced that I did a good job there uh so I'm not going to show you the back of it <laughs> I'm not going to show you all uh how inept I am at trying to do that but it's huge this was with my nihilist rainbow um 2019 blanket club I wanted to kind of do to make it along with people so that at the end of the year I could say look at this super massive huge blanket this is what you can do with the 2020 blanket so it's like club this is basically what I'm doing now so there was a lot of different colors there was two different colors so there's 24 and <laughs> math there was two different colorways a month so there's 24 different colors in this and the whole thing was that it was like a big sort of bright neon blanket this is only showing you some of the colorways um here's some more <laughs> here's some more of them excellent and you can kind of see where you know the different little chevrons 
it's a lovely pattern and there's also like an add-on pack if you don't like doing the same thing all the time that have different uh you know like color work or brioche or whatever if if you want to kind of mix it up a little or if you like one of those other things a little bit more uh highly recommended i just did the plain vanilla one the whole way through because i was convinced that i would probably forget what i was doing because <laughs> i was trying desperately to keep up with it and i chose chunky for mine because i knew there was no way i was going to knit um like nearly two and a half kilos of four ply or dk into a blanket in 2019 and i'm glad that i made that choice but it also meant that this is basically the only thing i was working on in december i was pretty good at keeping up but i had about 400 grams that i had to knit through in december which i know it's chunky but i'm a slow knitter and i was really busy and it felt probably a lot more like a race to the finish than perhaps it actually was I did finish it on Christmas Eve though. I was sitting on the couch and I wove in all of the ends and I was absolutely thrilled. <laughs> I was absolutely thrilled and I'm really thrilled with it. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of pictures and you're all gonna be sick of seeing this on Instagram, but I'm so proud of it and it's so huge and I love it so much that I'm really excited to start the 2020 Blanket Club. And the theme for this year is a light in the darkness. So if you look on my Instagram, oh never mind, I'll just put the image um, up here or something. Uh, so these are kind of the inspiration pictures for what I'm thinking for the Light in the Darkness Club. Each month will kind of flow into the next, like this one did. And I've decided I'm definitely crocheting the one for 2020 because I swore up and down that in 2019 I was going to crochet a blanket because I was like, I'm not going to have time to knit a blanket. Crochet is a bit faster, it uses the yarn a bit, uses up the yarn a bit faster. It's definitely what I'm going for. And then I discovered the Northeasterly because somebody in my stitching group brought hers and I just fell madly in love with it. And I just couldn't stop myself from immediately purchasing the pa pattern and casting on. Like, I just couldn't. I couldn't stop myself. So I think in 2020, I am going to do a crochet blanket. It's been a while. It's been a minute since I've done some crochet. So I feel like it's time to bring bring back the hook. I haven't decided whether I'm just going to do a super standard, you know, you know, just like a ripple blanket or if I'm going to look for something a little bit more uh, interesting or with a bit more interest. I haven't decided. I've, I'm going to just have a look and, and make a decision. And I will share with you when I've all made that decision, but I've not made it yet. But anyway, I'm super pleased with myself for knitting a whole giant blanket in 2019, even if it is chunky. I know that some of you watching will be thinking, I could knit that whole thing in a month or less. And you're all probably right, but you're all much faster, more efficient knitters than me. And um, you probably also, I don't know, you're just faster. You're just faster than me and you're probably a little bit more focused, I'll be honest. Whereas I tend to get distracted by things. Oh, you know, here's some new paints that I just, that happened to just fall into my basket. And now I have them and I want to play with them and so on and so forth. So anyway, that's my big finish, I think, for 2019. Finished it on Christmas Eve. I think that this color, right, is probably my favorite. Like this, this like quadrant here, probably my favorite of the entire blanket club which is surprising because i know most of you are thinking that you'd think it would have been this one like the sort of greens but i just i really liked i really loved how these turned out definitely my faves so i will say i did also finish another rainbow project there's a bit of a theme in 2019 also i am kind of like attracted to colored gradients as a whole which is amazing that i've never ended up with a find your fade shawl it's one of those things that i keep looking at and they're beautiful and i love them but it's four ply and huge and would take me the rest of my life although i suppose it could be my death shroud when i die <laughs> assuming i've finished it by then so i love color gradients I find them really satisfying. They make my heart happy. They bring me a lot of joy in a world that doesn't actually offer up a whole lot of joy. Let's be real. So uh, I made these. Uh, I finished these, I think, like on the way up to Perth Festival of Yarn in September. So this is with an emo rainbow sock blank, like a double stranded sock blank. So they, so they both mostly match. Uh, they aren't complete perfect matches, but you know, close enough. And I got these sock blockers on Etsy. Aren't they fabulous? I'll try and drop a link if I can find the shop I got them from. So these are the socks that I made. I finished them on the way up to Perth Festival of Yarn in September. And, you know, honestly, 
I'm sad that I keep these as a sample because I love them and I really want to wear them. So there's a non zero percent chance that I'm gonna make another pair specifically so that I can wear them because I feel like if I wear these they will never ever make it back to a show ever because they will get sucked into the sock void <laughs> especially the hand knitted sock void uh which basically means that I I don't know like I just wear them so frequently that I would they would just not be ready to go take back to a show is, is basically the point that I'm making so I definitely finished these as well. It's just a vanilla sock and I think I did. I did a fish lips kiss heel here. It was the first time that I've done the fish lips kiss heel and I have put these socks on <laughs> to make sure that I liked the heel fit. And I did like the heel fit. I don't know that it's completely right for me, but obviously socks and heels uh it's a very personal it's a very personal choice so and it really depends on the shape of your foot so i'm not super convinced that they are 100 percent the right heel for me but i have quite a high instep if you have suggestions for heels that are good for high insteps drop them into the comments because i need to know so that was the first time i've done a fish lips kiss heel but the rest of it was just a pretty vanilla sock there was nothing special it's just a plain toe up sock i did knit both of them from the same time at the same time from the same sock blank and that worked out pretty well for me i know that some people prefer to wind them into two balls before they start but i was it was all right for me i didn't have any issues and i knitted through basically the whole sock blank and i wear a size 7 uk us 9 shoe and these do fit and they go um i don't know kind of like a half calf sock so they're not short by any means as you can as you can see they are not short socks by any means they are a pretty decent length actually and i was pleased with it so there you go i was pleased with these i don't think there's actually any emo rainbow sock links in the shop so this is kind of um uh a purposeless <laughs> it's kind of a purposeless promo but i just wanted to show you that i finished them because i really liked how they turned out and i will definitely be dying more of those for waltham abbey wool show which is at the end it's not even at the end of this month it's on the 19th so i it's like what two weeks from sunday i really need to get my act together i mean it's not like i don't have enough yarn it just needs to yeah i don't know and the car is still not drivable <laughs> due to something wrong with it so we need to figure out all the logistics and how to get there and everything anyway so i finished these and i was pretty pleased with them as well so that's kind of i can't think if i finished anything else last year or not i'm sure i'm sure i probably did i remember passing things around my stitching group but i can't for the life of me remember what any of them could have potentially been so there you go, big blanket, made a hat, made a shawl, pair of socks. I mean, that's okay, right? Cast on a couple of jumpers. I should have dragged out the for fuck's sake to show you the progress that I've made, but I didn't, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I will show, how about this? I will deign to show you the for fuck's sake when I'm actually done with the color work and I have split for the sleeves. I will show it to you then and only then, which, I'm hoping might not be too much longer. <laughs> I did, however, cast on something for Christmas. I cast on an Alaska hat. It's been in my library for ages, probably since it was released. So whenever it was released, it's been in my library since then. And I've been working up the the sort of want to make a four ply hat because usually I make hats in a DK. And I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. So I cast it on. I'm using the Snek colorway for the for the hats. And I haven't decided what I'm doing yet for the sort of ombre-ish sunset slash sunrise kind of thing in the background. It's probably gonna be a mini set, maybe. We'll see we'll see. But anyway, I did cast that on. I have not knitted very much on it. I've basically just done maybe, I don't know, 10 rounds of the, of the ribbing there at the bottom. I had intended on knitting during, uh, when I went to go see Cats on New Year's Eve with a friend, but Cats was such a sensory, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. It was just, it was a sensory 
just <laughs> that I just couldn't even bring myself to knit a really simple rib because I just didn't think I could handle it. <laughs> Cats was wild. And I, uh, yeah, anyway, if you're wondering what else we got up to, you can check out the Vlogmas stuff, but it probably feels a bit dated now that the, the holidays are over and the festive period is ending. I will say that if you did watch our Vlogmases, thank you so much. It was a total blast doing them. I think we will definitely do them again next year. If you have any thoughts about what you'd like to see in either in podcast this year or in Vlogmas next December, do drop them into the comments and let us know. I was thinking I will do more of the sort of chill videos. I did one that was like a chill video for Vlogmas where it was just me dyeing yarn with some nice kind of chill music laid over the top of it. I was thinking about doing more of those and having that be a separate sort of section here on the YouTube channel. And, but without me talking, it would just be yarn dyeing, some chill music, that's it. So I was thinking about doing that. If you have any thoughts about that, let me know whether you think that it should be the sound of the yarn or whether you think it should be music or maybe a little bit of both. But that's something I'm definitely planning on doing in 2020 as soon as I get a new phone stand because both the gimbal and my phone stand have betrayed me with being broken. <laughs> and it's frustrating because the gimbal, like they're not cheap to procure in the first place. And now it just feels like an expensive piece of whatever it's made out of metal there's gears and stuff inside and there's not really any way that you can fix them which is really frustrating because I would rather fix it I don't want to just get rid of it and get a new one I'd rather just fix this one but there doesn't seem to be any way that I can fix this one this one I've spent quite a lot of time researching and there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing there's no way to fix it if you happen to be a gimbal repairing super genius, then send me a DM. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. I know that this isn't super long. Well, I guess it is kind of long. I guess it did end up being kind of a normal length podcast. That's it for me for this week and this episode. Next week will be my big giant announcement. So please do come back for that. I have a lot of work to do before I'm able to go ahead and launch that, which is why I didn't do it today because I haven't really, I've been trying to actually take some chill time and I'm really struggling. Like I, I don't do well with just trying to chill. So I've been, you know, working on other creative projects and catching up on laundry and etc. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will be back here, here, I will be back here next week with the big announcement. And we will of course be back on Saturday night with our regular Saturday night live stream. I'm not 100% sure what we're playing on Saturday. I'm sure Sarah has something planned. She's usually the one who plans these things or with regards to what games we're playing anyway. Uh, it's not just about games though. People de have developed kind of a little bit of a community and they all come and they hang out and they chat and it's just a really nice place to hang out on a Saturday night. Well, at least I hope so. So do come along for that if you're looking for some virtual knit and natter, stitch and bitch kind of geekiness definitely come and hang out. I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to go and edit this and I'm going to go and sit on the couch and work on my Alaska hat, maybe, or probably find something else to do. I don't know. Like I said, the rest of you, much better knitters and crocheters and definitely more focused than me. All right, that's it for me. Thanks everyone. I'll see you next week.